From the moment that Boruto to Blue Vortex dropped, one of the questions that quickly began to pop up as the story progressed was, why was it that the person standing opposite of Boruto hadn't used his full power in a fight yet? It wasn't as loud of a question as the ones that people had to ask about Boruto, who unlike Kawaki, who has used the Karma Seal multiple times throughout the story so far, Boruto hadn't even used the Karma Seal in his fights at all. With Kawaki, it was a glaring issue and it's led to conversations about Kawaki falling off and Kawaki being on fraud watch and while we've been making jokes about it, you guys know my stance, I don't agree with those claims at all about fraud watch as much as I think that we're seeing Kawaki being used as a ticking time bomb, just like how Shikamaru called him at the end of part one. But in today's video, I want to go a little bit deeper into why I believe he might not have been using true essence of karma in part two of the story so far, and why this is indeed something that we need to keep our eyes on very closely moving forward. For this video's thumbnail, you'll probably see Kawaki in a garbage can or Boruto holding a lid on it. Or I might ask the channel artist to draw Boruto driving a garbage truck that has Kawaki's face on it or Kawaki in a courtroom being called a fraud. But regardless of what we go with, it should still capture the soul of the video itself, which is the belief that Kawaki is hot garbage now. And I want to point out to Kawaki fans that just as I said in the chapter review that I'm going to be buying the dip on the Kawaki stocks. I'm going to be telling you guys why you should be doing the same thing in this video. So if you're a Kawaki fan, consider this to be your group therapy. While seeing Kawaki getting slumped over every other chapter seems like it's a recurring theme, there is a saving grace here for Kawaki, which is that he has not at any point in Boruto to Blue Vortex shown his true power. Sure, we've seen him use the Karma Seal before, and we see him use the full usage of Ishiki's Dojutsu, but one thing we haven't seen Kawaki do with that Dharma Will Eye is use it simultaneously alongside his true essence karma form. That form that a lot of fans have referred to as being Horned Kawaki. And I do not think that this was something done by mistake. In fact, I think it was something very much intentional. I believe we're in a situation where the narrative is giving us a false sense of security in terms of our expectations with Kawaki when in reality, there's something more being planned for him and this would not be the first time that we've seen this used in Boruto. I really want you guys to think about it for a moment. When Jigen pulled up on Naruto their first fight it was a brief skirmish outside of their house where Jigen only used the basic karma seal amp when he fought against Naruto and Sasuke as a duo he continued to only use the basic karma seal amp until Sasuke and Naruto came up with a plan that almost killed Jigen and it almost worked because Sasuke figured out a weakness to Jigen's Sukuna Hikona and Karma Absorption combination that not even Jigen himself knew was possible which that prompted him to quit playing around and use his full power of the Karma by using what we call Horn Jigen or True Essence Jigen and there was a monster increase in his power as a result enough so that True Essence Jigen was able to knock Sasuke's stamina bar in half with just one hit and he knocked all the sonic rings out of Naruto with just an uppercut and even Kurama was telling Naruto, shut up talking before this dude kills you because he's not playing around. That's the first time we've ever seen Kurama sit there and tell Naruto, yo dog, shut up. Against Kashin Koji, we saw a weakened Jigen who could only use 10% of his power. At that point in time, he first started out using the basic Karma Seal before quickly jumping into his horn form to fight off and eventually die at the hands of Kashin Koji. With Kawaki, the thing that we've seen is that he hasn't used his horn form. I will say this, given how much we've seen Kawaki get bullied so far in part two, it was all to set the stage for us to get an accurate measure on his power increase so far during that three year time skip. We're being eased into it the same way we're being eased into Boruto and Kawaki, each tapping into their true power throughout part one one and just like how we're seeing in part two kawaki he got off guarded by claw grime and he needed to tap into the karma's basic amp and power and he needed to use ninja attack to shoot off a chakra blast to destroy it he tried to use the basic karma seal amp to attack jura and he got quickly demolished with two hits the second of which hit him so hard he went to sleep and started snoring so loudly that Delta had to scream to wake him up. We needed to see all of that so we could accurately place where Jura is in his power 
And so that when we do see Jura fight, say someone like Damon or even Kawaki in the future, we're giving a direct measure. If someone is holding their own with Jura, then their full power, it goes directly over Kawaki and base and Koma Seal Kawaki. That by extension allows us to get a better grasp on where Kawaki is when he shows up and he uses that horn true essence version of karma that gives you a much clearer measuring stick once everything's been laid down when you show off a power just like this it's just as important as when you show it off not necessarily how you show it off going back to a series that heavily inspired both naruto and boruto which kishimoto and ikimoto have each stated more than once how heavily akira toyama's dragon ball inspired them Ikimoto a lot more so than Kishimoto. It would be like showing Vegeta going Super Saiyan for the first time before Goku fought against Android 19. We needed to see what a sick Super Saiyan Goku could do first before we started measuring Super Saiyan Vegeta and then Piccolo when Piccolo fought against Dr. Gero, which because I know someone's gonna comment down in the comment section, I'm saying correct, it's, it's not Juro, English dub made a mistake on that. We needed to see the twins that Dr. Gero kidnapped and made them into cyborgs. One shot Dr. Gero before Cyborg 18 embarrassed Vegeta in a fight, and then she in 17 destroyed the Z fighters with one hit. The timing of those events, it gave you a clear roadmap where everyone stood from Jeans Oningen, 17 and 18 to Trunks, Vegeta, Piccolo, and etc. and Cell, and you just keep going on and on and on. Well, we're at that same point now, coming out of the Boruto time skip. There were a lot of questions that we as a community we had going into the time skip, and we still have now. How strong is Boruto in base? Well, we have a pretty good measure on it. He's drastically stronger than Jigen, but we don't know where he is with the Koma Seal. How strong is Kawaki? We've seen him use the basic Koma a few times, so we know that the Kawaki stocks are going a little bit low right now, which again, you buy the dips. That means that when the price goes low, you buy it more shares if you believe in the product. And I do still believe in Kawaki. We haven't seen Damon's full power yet, which given Kawaki got put to sleep and Himawari's in danger, we might see it. Gives us a great opportunity to see where Damon is, and then by extension, you can start scaling other characters accordingly. We don't know how strong Jura is, and depending on how the fights that are coming up play out, we'll get our answer to that question as well. It just comes down to the timing of the whole situation. Some things you just don't rush into, which I know that's super hard because we're in a TikTok generation wants everything right now, and this is not something you can binge watch. To use another example from a series that Ikimoto admits taking a lot of influence from, from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, which I'm halfway through part one. But even now I can see some of the similarities that one of my editors, Isaiah had mentioned about Boruto and Kawaki with Jonathan Joestar and Dio. And so far this Joestar kit, while he has been impressive with his growth in my opinion, it hasn't been at the level of Dio, which the next section of my Jojo blind review will be going up on my Patreon next week after Easter since I've gotten behind and I've got family visiting me right now for the Easter holiday. So I'm gonna get slowed up on working on some of the content I did wanna get done. I do see the delayed gratification at play with that entire situation. and. I think we're getting the same thing here with Boruto. I think it's important to remember that with part one, with Kawaki, we need to see him come down to earth a bit because look at how strongly he finished Boruto Naruto Next Generation. That boy Kawaki was on a generational run, had way too much momentum and way too much heat on his side. Whereas Boruto, he had his back against the wall. He looked like he was gonna lose until he found a way to break down the wall that he was up against and he escaped. Kawaki is gonna go through a humbling phase for him and that's what's going on now, as well as a cool down phase for us as readers to know that Kawaki, he isn't untouchable like he came off at the end of part one. He's clearly gotten dull because in part one, that claw grime never would have gotten the drop on him. Neither would Miski's attack to sneak attack him, yet his combat sense is clearly dropped. He's making a lot of mistakes that Ishiki made. Kaguya was able to catch Ishiki off guard despite Ishiki being her superior. It comes down to letting your guard down. It comes down to viewing yourself as so much more superior than the other people around you. And when you get like that, you can be had. What we're seeing here with Kawaki, in my opinion, is that despite him having gotten stronger, and more accustomed to his powers. He's gotten rusty. There needs to be a trade-off because at the end of part one, that man was on fire. If this was basketball, Boruto Naruto Next Generations Kawaki, this dude had an insane stat line at the end of Boruto Naruto Next Generations between chapter 65 to chapter 80. 
This dude was averaging 40 points, 20 rebounds, and 10 block shots, but he had zero assists because he was already doing so much work. Who got time to pass the ball like that? He reawakened his karma seal. He killed Boruto. He was a source of conflict for many people in the village. He became the most important piece to Amado needing his daughter revive. He sealed away Naruto and Hinata. He gave us the single greatest plot twist in Boruto Naruto Next Generations with Omnipotence. A plot twist that was so good, even staunch Boruto haters all of a sudden came back and now they talk all glowingly about Boruto. And the guy proceeded to embrace the heat by taking advantage of the situation to frame Boruto for the murders of Naruto and Hinata. And best of all, he was out there spitting facts about why Boruto needed to die because Boruto was still technically a threat due to Momoshiki still being able to hijack his body occasionally, even though Momoshiki cannot revive using Boruto's body. So basically that whole Boroshiki threat where Momoshiki would hijack control, go on a rampage and then get back the keys to Boruto, that's still there. But it's not the issue of if you kill Boruto, like how Kashi and Koji killed Jigen and Ishiki got revived if someone killed Boruto, or even though Boruto is at 100% genetically Otsutsuki, Momoshiki can never revive. That's where we're at. Can't come back to life, but can take control of his body. The only real questions that we have left now are as follows. If Kawaki does start using the true essence version of Karma with the horn, or any still gets body, does this man go down as a bigger fall from grace that we haven't seen since Yamcha? Yes, I'm going there, Yamcha where this dude went from highly relevant and one of the strongest fighters in the main cast, this is why you don't start the story at Z, to all of a sudden he became a mean material before we even got halfway through the Dragon Ball manga. Again, you don't start the story at Z. And the second question we have to ask is one that is even worse than that. I know you're going, wait a second, how is anything worse than a Yamcha comparison? Allow me to explain, is it possible that Kawaki doesn't fully know how to fully control that horn version of Karma to draw all of his power yet. Because when we saw him do it in part two, he did it both times under very emotional circumstances. And that will be a very ballsy decision to make from a writing perspective. If that's what you're going to do, it requires a major source of goodwill with your readers and a massive belief in the positioning that you're placing the story in. Because in all honesty, in a situation like this, you only really get one true opportunity to make it clear that this is what you're doing. And if you do not effectively communicate that this is what you're trying to convey, it's going to leave some of the readers who aren't paying attention a bit confused. And when writing something like a shonen, you have to force feed your points. You can't get too super subtle. It has to be spoon fed to where everything is easily picked up on. And when I say you need big time conviction, I mean, it's gotta be similar to my stance on the 15 strongest Boruto characters video that you're seeing here on the screen that you can click on. And because we hit the like threshold on that video, the 30 strongest Boruto character video is being worked on now. So make sure to keep notifications turned on for that 